All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the unboxing. We got the GEC44-9W here. W stands for the wide cab. So our classic red uh, scale trains box. On the back, we got more info on the specific model. So it's our H2 BNSF. We got all of our road specific details and then what you would expect from a rivet counter in general. So you can see all the nice features. We go over here to the side of the box. We do have the image of the locomotive inside. We've got the DCC and sound. 4313 H2 scheme as delivered. There's a few differences you'll see um, on delivery and what the current locomotive looked like. And of course we got the low sound model. So got the product number. So we'll go ahead and unbox this slowly. We got our operator's manual. So it looks like the trifold. Um, just maintenance, lubrication, DCC, um, introductions, warranty, and then that's basically it. So I uh, got a nice piece of foam, and then we'll go ahead and take it out of the box. Nothing else in the box. So we do have the double clam style. We've got a nice hard piece of plastic, outer shell, extra bag of roller bearers. So we got six extra in silver. So do have some few pieces of styrofoam up top and on the bottom. And then we do have the locomotive. Go ahead and take it out. We got soft plastic on the top and the bottom, protect the roof and the fuel tank. Then we do have these, um, you know, truck stabilizers, little pieces of plastic. And then we do have some handrail um, guards, little pieces of foam. All right, so this is my first time opening the box. So uh, I don't, there wasn't any loose pieces or broken pieces, but we'll go ahead, just give it a look down. Looks pretty good. So one of the first things I'm noticing here is the orange. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I was, um, I didn't really love about my tier four, which I got one right here, was the orange color. I thought it was a little too reddish. And you can obviously see here, we got, you know, this is a completely different shade. So I don't know if they changed it, but it, um, it looks a lot better to me. This looks a lot closer to what BNSF should be. Um, if this one, I mean, this one could be repainted to a different color just because it's so far off. But um, So we'll go ahead and get this on our mirror turntable and we'll go ahead and do a quick rundown of the details and, you know, see what this thing's made of. All right, so we went ahead and we got this on the mirrored turntable. We don't have the light studio set up, so we're just going to have to make do with what we got. But looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just run through the details I can notice. And then most of the details on here are road specific. So a lot of them, um, if you have the NS version or the UP version that's coming out later, these are gonna be completely different for you. So I'll go ahead and I'll try and in the post editing, kind of make a note of, oh, this is different or road specific, but um, I'm pretty sure for the entire time, we'll just be like, you know, this will be, this is different, this is different. So, uh, so the first thing we'll go ahead and start at the front. We do have the semi-scale metal coupler right here. We have the snow plow with the grab iron separately attached and painted, look pretty good. We have the MU cables and we have the air hose, all with the silver tips. We have a little bit of slight damp discoloration, might be damaged, but nothing too crazy. Uh, we have the MU cable between locomotives, painted yellow. We have the deck mounted ditch lights with the LEDs. Separately applied plastic handrails, plastic chain. We do have uh, handrails up on the cab right here. Oh, as I just knocked one out. We have a raised up door with the window and you see, see the black uh, glazing around the side. Nose mounted LED headlight. Separately applied ladder on the front, painted yellow. We do have the sand fillers and the nose grab irons all looking pretty good. We do have the windshield wipers uh, etched metal looking pretty good you can see the 
video recorder right in there. It's kind of hard to see because it matches the interior of the cab. Then we do have the, we do have some grab irons up here, up top, and then we do have the road, um, the number boards up here. If we kind of move over to the side here, we do have some tinting right there on the window. It's a little bit difficult to see. You can see, you know, fine printing on the side. Uh, one of the trademarks of the Dash 9 versus um, your like AC 4400s is this window or this electrical compartment right here. That looks pretty good. Um, the trucks, you can see, you know, you have your high aid trucks with the roller bearings. You got three on this side or two. This one at stationary does not move. Um, separately applied brake piping looks pretty good. We do have our bell over here. We do have some nice fan details over here. We can move along to the side of the locomotive. We do have the fuel tank, the fuel cutoffs, fuel fillers, uh, the gauge, all looking pretty good. We do have piping underneath. I believe this is loose and I tried uh, putting it back in, but it just wasn't um, sticking, so I'm just gonna have to re-glue it. Not a huge issue, probably just came loose in shipment. Along the side here, we do have the BNSF and the yellow and orange. Looks pretty good, I like that. Um, not a whole lot on the long hood. So we'll come back here to the rear truck. Uh, we just have the single roller bearing on this rear truck right here. We do have the plastic chain. And then we, um, plastic chain does, it's not attached to the truck just so it can pivot easily. Hopefully, <clears throat> uh, you know, if you push that a little too curve, a little too hard on your curves, it doesn't look like it'll rub off, but um, I think it still looks pretty good. We got our uh, brake wheel back here. We got our fan grill. We can go ahead and I'll try and pick this up carefully, but you can see uh, your dynamic brake in the back, or your radiator, I should say. See-through radiator. You can see the actual radiator at the top. All these fans are etched metal. Uh, I think they mentioned 26 fans or 26 etched metals. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of etched metal products on this locomotive. Uh, so, you can see the handrails look pretty good. Uh, they're nice, they're plastic, but you know, they're fine, but they're not flimsy. Come back to the rear of the locomotive. We do have the sand filler up top. Rear lights, we do have the grab irons. We got, you know, a few in the green and the rest are in orange. Plastic rear handrails, cut off cut lever. We have the spare knucklers right here. So we got two of them. We do have the, the plastic metal, or the metal coupler. More MU cables and our air hose, all with the silver tip. We do have the MU cable, so. And then we do have the cross herald right there. Looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any, not seeing any voids in the paint. Um, I know when I first saw the image, I thought these were voids. And then actually looking at the prototype photos, um, it seems that these are actually supposed to be painted on like that. So I'll go ahead and throw up the photo I'm using for um, to kind of compare. So it's just you know a common photo. So we're on the fire, or we're on the engineer side. Overall, you know, pretty much the same. Um, you know, our trucks look good. Some angle brackets right there. That looks good. Our t our air tanks with um, our separately applied piping. You know, that looks good. We do have more piping over here, and this looks really good. Uh, it just kind of looks like a a scramble piping, which. If you ever seen a locomotive that's, you know, the underside is, you know, just a bunch of piping that you don't really know what it does, but we do have our brake assembly. So, uh, dynamic brake um, intakes. Do we have our sunshade with our rear view mirrors? And we do have, you know, our GE um, builder's plate. And then we're back up to the front. So, we'll go ahead and look at the top now. We do have our um, our dome antenna, nothing else up top. We do have a, one little grab iron up here. More panels with um, applied brake, uh, with applied handles. So, 
We'll go ahead and I'll show you this. So uh, the BNSF they mentioned has the the handles that are slightly different than the other ones. That's one of the things I remember from the video. Uh, the lost wax uh, brass casting right here for the horn. We do have the bathtub style exhaust and then our see-through radiators, which they do have a lot of depth in them. You know, you got your, your outer etched metal and then you got your actual inner one. So they look really nice. Go ahead and just take a peek at the bottom. You know, nothing too crazy. So overall, it looks really good. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is we got our five step steps on the side so and they're all see-through so you know really nice locomotive definitely stepping up the game um, this is on par with their you know your tier four so we are gonna go ahead and put it on the track do some startup do some sounds and see how it does uh, so I think they got the new ESU version 5 decoder so I'll go ahead and check out how that does and we'll go ahead and run some trains so We'll go check out. All right, so we got this on the track and we're ready to go. Just a few things I forgot to mention about the locomotive. The weight is 23.8 ounces, 675 grams. So it's pretty hefty, a little bit less than your tier four, but still very heavy compared to most locomotives. Went ahead and we did the Micromark pull meter and that read about 5.9 ounces. So pretty hefty puller, which you would expect with this kind of weight. And then we went ahead and we did the coupler test and that was low on both the front and the rear locomotive and we'll go ahead and throw up some photos just so you know so we're gonna go ahead and plug this in we're gonna turn on track power and just see what it does which it shouldn't do anything because it has a startup sequence when you press f8 so we'll go ahead and press f8 So you can hear it came on, class lights came on, and then the ditch lights came on. A little bit tough to see because I positioned the locomotive weirdly. But you can see right there, we do have the walkway lights on the front of the locomotive. We do also have it over here on the rear, and over there. So zero is the headlight, you can see that turned on and off. One is the bell. Two is the horn, and it's you can kind of play with it so that it keeps going if you leave the two on. So you can leave the horn for you know as long as you want. Three is the coupler crash. Do that pretty good. Four should be the dynamic freak. So five is uh, stinging our headlight. It's a little tough to see. You can see that. <clears throat> Six should be our ditch lights. And eight. Eight will turn the sound off. So when you see you turn the sound off, our class lights and our walkway lights look also went off. So nine is the ESU drive holder, which I think I have to be moving for that. And then all the other functions. So I did F11, that's our manual. Radiator fan. And then we went ahead and did F8. So we'll go ahead and move it up to speed step one. This should have built in momentum. So we'll go ahead and just see. Waiting for it to actually kick up a little bit.
As you increase the speed stops, you get here, kind of rev up a little bit. So there we go, speed step one. Pretty smooth, I'm not seeing any jerkiness. Two, you know, three, four. So pretty good speed control. I'll go ahead and throw it in reverse to do the same thing. The rear also has the ditch lights that are dimmable. So once again, we got speed step one. Uh, just a little bit of jerkiness. They might go away in with a little bit of braking time. But go ahead and get back to the center. So, so that's it I got for all you guys right now. You know, overall, pretty great locomotive. We'll go ahead and do some run-by shots, and I'll go ahead and just give the locomotive a score after I did a few tailings. So we'll go ahead. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like with the lights dim. So you got your marker lights, with your walker lights here and here. You can see it looks pretty good. Also, I wanted to show you the capacitance. So it has a super capacitor in it. So we're gonna go ahead and take it off the rails. And it's still running. So you got a pretty good six, seven seconds there. We'll go ahead and flip it around. So uh, what I've been doing is I can actually flip it around and get back on the track without losing power. So that's usually a pretty good sign. So we'll go ahead and we'll adjust the camera. We'll just show you how bright that headlight is. We'll hit that F8 one more time. Start it back up. So there's your headlights and ditch lights. Pretty bright, got the golden light and it looks pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead, turn the lights back on and we're gonna show you a few running shots. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and give it a score real quick. Not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. I'm gonna throw up the rubric for what I'm grading it based off of. It's pretty similar to what I graded the NS911 unit on. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. So the packaging, you know, good full five points accuracy very good details uh, excellent details you know can't say enough about that there's just details everywhere road specific details and um, you'll see the same on this next run so uh the paint and decals uh, i am going to take a point off there just because there was a few spots on my locomotive where there was paint nicks paint smudges off it looks like um, stuff required a second coat or you know got a little runny so there's also a few spots on the BNSF yellow striping where um, it's a little fuzzy and it's kind of in a noticeable area so I can notice it I'm guessing other people will might be able to fix it with some uh, weathering but it shouldn't like th look like that out of the box but overall pretty good I'm only gonna take a point away so uh, the couplers and wheels, uh, overall the wheel sets were engaged, they looked good, but the couplers, both of them were low, and it wasn't even like a close low, it was like more than 50%, so, um, you know, that category is 10 points, you know, you give basically a third to each one, so I'm going to take away, you know, two thirds, because both those couplers are, you know, they're not good, so uh, that comes out to seven points I'm going to take away from the couplers and wheels. Uh, the motor and electronics, you know, very good motor, nice puller, you know, will be a workhorse for any road unit um, on your layout. Um, the electronics look really great. The lights, amazing, uh, good detail. So um, that gets the full points. The value, um, it's out of 10 points. That's pretty good. Uh, this is more of a subjective thing, but I really don't like paying full price for my locomotives and I will on the next run, I'll probably pick up another two or three of these. So overall pretty good and then the miscellaneous uh, I'm gonna take three points away just because there was um, there were several portions or parts on my locomotive where there was damage um, on my front plow there was damage other parts you know just damage couplers were low so I am gonna take away three points for that so all right so overall I took away 11 points that comes out to a B plus you know still really good definitely recommend it to anyone overall it's really good but I feel like it was rushed out. I feel like Skill Trains kind of pushed it 
to try and make it out so they would have some units ready. And that's what you kind of get with this advanced run. So this is easily an A-plus unit, you know, scoring 98 to 99 every time if they just take their time with it. If you fix your couplers, there's six points. You know, if you take your time with the painting and the damage, you know, there's your other five points. So um, overall, you know, this should have been a 100 uh, perfect score locomotive, but we just had some issues with um, production that I feel that because it was rushed out to get it out in time for the show, you know, we might have skipped some of our quality control issues that Scale Trains has implemented on other locomotives, but I fully feel that they'll fix them for the next run where they have more time to kind of get some get some quality control issues underway, but overall really good, so uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. We're going to go to some running shots, so tell me what you guys think. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.